Good morning, everyone. It's Chris from Solstice ATR, Axel, Instagram, Discord. You can find me on any of those platforms as well as YouTube. Remember, we use this adaptive algorithm for side market, up market, down market. The most important thing, watch this small video for 10, 15 minutes. It'll give you an outlook for the coming week. Um, the most important thing, we trade what we see on the charts. We're not a broker dealer. Our past performance doesn't give us any indication of our future results. Let's go to the next slide. And I did them today in a little bit more on a slide platform for a couple of reasons. And what I wanted to do is minimize the, the noise in them. And the reason behind it, I just want to show you the overall outlook of the combination of the S&P NASDAQ as well as the Dow. You can see the consolidation from uh, February 19, the COVID, till March 23rd, 2020. The lows, we had the 2022 highs and uh, January 3rd of 2022 highs. We jumped down to the, the October 10-10 uh, 2022 lows. We rallied back up, but down here, we lost a little bit of momentum. We came back down. We are on the combination of those three below the 50 simple moving average as well as the 116, which is in orange, and the 50 is in yellow, the 18 is in red and green, 200 is in white, and the 250 is in Zion color. Last time when we bounced, we bounced off this consolidation, the February, the consolidation of midpoint, and rallied back up. So since we are coming back, we have to pay attention. F5, basically resistance and support, this is the low in 1010 to the high here. You can see the Fibonacci, we got the 61, 50, and the 38.2, which is F3. Pay attention to the 50 and the 61 and the 200 SMA in case we do still lose between 3.5 to 8.8%, 8 .8%, or do we reverse and get back the 17%, that 10% that we lost on the way down. So that's the first, second slide. Let's go to slide three. Slide three, I said expected outcome in the ranges of the S&P or SPY. You can use SPY, which is the ETF. I showed the 2022 high till the low here. We had the January low in the March after the Silicon Valley. We had the rally. We were above the 50 SMA. We're above the 116 and above the 18 simple moving average as well as the 200 when we got the bounce here in the prior year. This area here, I'm showing two scenarios. To get to the 200 SMA and get back to that level, it's going to be about 17% move up. From the high of this year to the low of the close on Friday, we had a 10.63% decline in the market in the SPX. Whether you look at the SPY, whether you look at the SPX, the E-mini, they are similar numbers, maybe hundreds of a cents difference in each one. But the most important thing, we have lost 10.6%, 10.63, so let's call it 10.6. From here, if I'm going to go further down to the 200 SMA down here, I still can lose a little bit more between a 3.5 all the way to 5.5% and vice versa, reverse back up, or do we get a snap back to the backside of that uptrend channel from the October the March back to this side, or we do come back below those two candle and the consolidation. This is a consolidation area. We did a W, we consolidated, then we broke up. That was a sharp, but the S&P expected outcome range, it's a little bit more weaker than the NASDAQ. Let's go to the next slide, number four. Remember, you can take snapshots of these to help you out. I put here a cleaner chart on the NASDAQ. You can see when we bottomed out, we had this bottom here. We had the October, we had the January low. This was like a head and shoulder and a reverse back. It created that move up. That consolidation here that happened in August of 2022 and the dump, you can see when we broke up. Coming back down to the 116 simple moving average, you have about another 3.4% decline in it. And we had lost on the... NASDAQ from the high to down here to the close, we had lost 10.99%, but it was below 11% in 
before Friday's close, but we kind of pushed a little bit to close at 11% decline in the NASDAQ. You can use the QQQ, NDX, or the slash NQ, which is the E-mini contract or the micro E-mini. So we can see that percentage there. Let's go to slide number five. That was from the prior week. I put this up and I said, here are the scenarios from 1956 on the SVX all the way till 1971. What is the expected average decline in the market? Can we lose a 13.9 or do we lose a 16%? This is just historical, doesn't have to happen. Since the prior week, we noticed we came back down to here and we had lost the 50 simple moving average in the S&P 500. So this bottom here, the 39.90, 39.80, and the 200 SMA at 39.40, this is going to be a very important number for the S&P to hold. So keep an eye on SPX or SPY. Slide number six, which is the Bitcoin. I have Bitcoin here for one reason. We had this prior gap in the prior year. If we take last year's high to the low, this is our 50% weekly. And we are coming in that linear. We had drawn that uptrend channel from beginning of the year. And we said we have to eventually fill this gap, which we did. Rallied, came back, retested. Rallied, came back down. Now we're rallying up. We cleared the, this gap here, but we have the 61.8 Fib extension from the prior year as resistance. Do we clear it, look above and fail, and come back to create another rounded bottom before continuing higher? Pay attention because they fly into safety in Bitcoin as well as gold. I don't have gold up here. I did not put it. Let's go to the next slide. I'm going to go to slide seven. And I put the fear in greed gauge. This is the VIX, which is the ETF. I did not use the VX in the futures. We can see from the prior year in 2021, when we spiked up every time we created lower highs, but we balanced out around the 19 in the prior year. And in 2020, we fell down as low as 14. This year, we fell in the 12, 14 year range, and we rallied up to the 200 SMA. This is a very important area that if we clear the 200 SMA, you're going to look for the backside of this channel or the second one up here. And if we fall back in and create a rounded bottom down here, that's an opportunity for the market to go back up. Let's go to slide eight. And this is where you can check us out. And slide nine, I just want to say to you guys, hey, thank you. Hit the subscribe. Give us your commentary on Solstice ATR, the YouTube channel, and so on. So let's go back to slide number eight. And I'll come back to it last. Let's go to each slide in the TD Ameritrade or Schwab, whatever you want to call it. I'm using Tinkerswim. I got the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, NASDAQ, Russell, and SPX. We can see that this level where the 200 SMA is sitting in the 50 Fibonacci F5. This is a very important area or the 50 SMA and the F3, which is a 38.2 in case we get a snap back up. Pay attention to what the technical, because this was the consolidation. If I do zoom in here, you can see that there was a couple of weeks of consolidation when we created that W and back here when we tested it, fell down, went back up. In August, that was the February high. You can see it. And the March rally, come down, rally back up, come back down, rally back up. And we are looking at the 200 SMA F5 and the 61.8, which is very far away on the combination of the four. But the Russell is a little bit weaker, as well as the S&P. The Dow is doing some catch up and the small cap is basically has plummeted quite a bit. Pay attention to the banks, XLF. XLU, XLP, XLC, XLI, as well as IEF in the, in the bond market. Let's take a look at uh, the measured move. I'm going to use the micro ES, and I'm using the micro ES in the S&P 500. The reason why I want to show you that consolidation, it's in a symmetrical triangle. If I go as far as March 23rd till October low, this is the linear regression uptrend that we are in and if i zoom in here most importantly is the 200 sma the backside of this channel the 50 as fibonacci as well coming back to the 38.2 and the 50 sma which is in yellow let's go now to the daily 
I'm going to break it down. You can see that this slope is very sharp, and we're coming to the backside of this channel in this consolidation here. This was the breakup, look down, look up, come back in, rally, consolidate. This area is a very important area, which I'm going to put an oval here. Unless things in the Federal Reserve Board change, I'm expecting a rebound. You can see here, I have a small gap here. We filled the prior gap here in the E-mini. Let's go to the 30-day now. We're going to do the measurement move. We're going to go intraday, 30 days. We're going to use four hours on the chart to make it simpler and easier to see. Where was last week's range? We were from here. This was Friday. This was Monday through Friday. Then we fell back down on Thursday and Friday. This week's high is here to this low here. So what I want to do is go get a measurement from top to the bottom here. We know that the prior week's range at the property. I'm going to make the 25 into 20 for everyone so everybody can see it. And the 125, I'm going to make it 20. And the 25 here, I'm going to make it 20 so everybody can see it. Um, this is 0. 0.2 and the 75 I'm going to make it 0.8 so the reasons why I am using this so we can calculate the data a little bit more easier for everyone so we don't have any problem seeing where the 20 and the 23 and the 25 percent is usually in the 20 0 to 20 and the 80 to 100 usually there's reversals from top to bottom as well as you know from bottom to top and the extensions to the top are up here. You can see where the 80% is going to act as resistance. This was the prior week's range. When we got up there, we couldn't go through and we fell further down. And now we got the extension to the bottom side, which is, you know, the 20%, the 50, there's a 61 there. I just have the 80 and the 100. It's easier to calculate. And I'm expecting the backside of this channel or either the 80% to hold in the S&P 500. So we can use that on an SPY. Similar thing, we can do the same thing in the SBY. Where was the prior week's range from up here down to here? You just do the measurement. We'll leave this one alone since we didn't change it. You can see where the extensions are and vice versa on the QQQ. And you can do the same thing here. This was the prior weeks in the QQQ. I did not take it off. You can see when it fell down to that 80% range. He got a reversal at the 78 coming back up and we fell down a little further out. You can remove this active or you can do activation. You can see how I do it. You can come down here to the bottom of this candle, activate it, grab the top of this, come back to here. And actually Sunday is the 22nd. You know where your ranges are for the coming week in the QQQ. But most importantly, I want to go to the daily chart. Let's go intraday, daily, one year. Push OK. And what we're going to do here is go to AAPL, show where there's strength and weakness. You can see after the Apple, you know, it's been sliding since ever that gap. We tried to fill it, which we did. Fell further down. We had a gap here, rallied up, fell back in, rallied up, fell back in. The 250 SMA in the backside of this channel is very important. And the back one here, if I do a linear regression downtrend channel or an LT, what I want to do is use my just to show you where it is, and I can show you that we are in a wedge in Apple. Pay attention to this area or the backside of the channel in Apple. Let's take a look at Amazon. I'll run through a couple of them. You can see Amazon after the it had a nice gap back up. Let's take a look at NFLX. Netflix is after the earning report gapped up, holding the backside of this channel where we fell from. Let's take a look at Tesla. Tesla is a little bit more weaker in the charts and you can see where the weakness is we're going to take a look at microsoft microsoft um, uh, microsoft t there we go and microsoft did hold very well but the problem is let's take a look at google and google l you can see after the cloud report google is in a little bit pain we had filled this gap you can see there's a portion here after the earning never filled this so there's actually a still in this area if i take a look at a box between this area here and this area here. And I look at this one, which is already filled, remove the drawing, and I extend it to the left, edit the property, and let's go back till, uh, let's do it till 404. 
you can see that there is a, still a gap in here in order to finish up and clear the top and we can extend it to the right couple of days at the property. We can go up uh, until 11, just do 11. There we go. So you can see where the level is in order for Google to clear to the upside. Let's take a look at back at the micro NQ, the NASDAQ 100. And I wanna go through the NASDAQ 100 to show you that we are in a linear regression downtrend. We tested the backside, we missed the 200 SMA. This consolidation here and here is very important in the NASDAQ to hold the 250 S SMA as well as the backside here. Pay attention in case we fall a little further down or do we reverse back up. I hope this video was very helpful. If you have any questions, once again, you know where to check us out or get in contact with us. Hit the smash button, give us your commentary, share it with your friends. Let us know how we can assist you. Take care, over and out.